So maybe I should make a little bit of an introduction. Um, Eric approached yeah, us. Okay. okay. So yeah, while you get set up there, Eric approached us and, you know, the CRM is just so super important. And um, we did a video a while back, you know, on the importance of it, but we really wanted to have a professional on the call just to talk about, you know, the importance of lead management, making sure you do your follow-up, not let good leads fall through the cracks. I know it happens all the time because, um, you know, I'm constantly talking to the different contractors in our group, whether the leads come through our website or, you know, they're using our marketing programs. And um, I guess it shouldn't surprise me anymore, but, uh, you know, I'll talk to someone and they said, oh yeah, they asked me to send a fax or, you know, send an email. And I sent them an email three weeks ago, but I haven't heard back yet. Um, you know, that those are some of the things that we'll definitely talk about today. Um, but Eric and I really hit it off and he showed me the software. I've gone through his website. Um, he's actually representing a company that is now a trusted partner of Choice Roof Contractor Group. But we're going to focus on the educational side of things, you know, first and how to just do better lead management with commercial roofing, it's really not that difficult and it'll make you tens of thousands of dollars uh, with just a little bit of effort. So Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, um, you guys can hear me all right. Can you see the screen as well? Yep, everything's looking good. Okay, great. So um, a little bit about me, I actually just have an agenda here, but I'll just go into, that's the first slide about me. There's me and my wife. Uh, at a wedding um, not too long ago. Um, I am from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, sunny South Florida. It's a great place to live. Sorry if you don't live in a sunny place or in South Florida, um, but we do actually have a conference every year down here. And if you're interested, it's uh, all commercial roofers coming down, learning more about the software in January. And uh, it's uh, really nice to escape the winter, I know, for a lot of you. Um, but I'm the COO at Follow-Up CRM. Uh, we work with 100 plus commercial roofers around the country. And uh, here are just some logos of some of our top clients. Uh, all of these roofers are at least uh, 20 million and up um, focusing on commercial roofing. And I've been at these companies, I've worked with these CEOs, with these VP of sales, with these chief estimators, and we really designed our solution around the commercial roofer and what they need to manage their leads, bids, clients, different things like that. Um, but I want to show you um, and talk about today more about what's under the hood of the software, not really the software itself, but why um, having a software or why lead management, pipeline management is important. So uh, I just, I'm gonna um, kick it off, that sounds good. All right, so the current state of sales at most of the commercial roofers that I work with is it's kind of like this, either bid and beg or you throw things on the wall and you see what sticks, right? So let's say you get a request, an RFP, and um, you're creating a bid, you throw it out there and you're like, oh, let's see what happens. And then, you know, you, you hope and pray and you bid and beg and you get what you get. Um, you know, that's working for a lot of people. And uh, the problem with that is that you're riding the wave of other people's decisions, right? Instead, instead of managing your own clients, your own leads, your own business, you have to ride the ups and the downs of the market. Right now, we're in a, a really high up season of the market. You know, everyone, you know, has the money. The economy is growing, which is phenomenal. Um, but, you know, you don't want to wait till there's rain before you fix your roof, if you know what I mean. I, I believe uh, John, uh, you know, Kennedy said that. I'm not sure, but you don't want to wait for the rain before you fix your roof. And so what we do at these commercial roofers is we help them manage their sales and estimating process. Um, if you're not managing your leads, your bids, your clients, your sales and estimating people, the 
there's a lot of problems with that. You know, whether it's relying on one sales guy, you might have one sales guy or company that, you know, closes 80% of the business. You don't want that because if he leaves or, um, you know, he, the whole business is riding on him. You don't want that. You rather have your, your sales spread across all your sales and estimators, right? If you don't have a process, uh, number two, then you don't know what's broken. You don't know how to optimize your process to better manage your leads, your bids, and your clients. So having that um, process is crucial to improving the business and helping your company grow. Um, number three, bid and beg. Uh, the problem with this big and bid and beg type of mentality is that you're going to eventually become the low bidder on an opportunity. A lot of the clients that we are working with had to change their philosophy from bid and beg to precise um, targeted outreach. And I know um, everybody on the call, you know, that's working with Jonathan knows the importance of reaching out to your ideal client who you want to work with. Um, a lot of the clients that we work with in their local mar markets have identified who their um, target audience is. And when you become a commercial roofer for property managers, for example, you're become, you become an expert in that area. And people are willing to pay a premium for your expertise rather than, you know, chucking a truck. And so changing your mentality from bid to beg to, you know, high margin, high profit opportunities is where you want to be because who wants to make a 2% margin job, you know, two to 5%. That's what we see a lot out there. A lot of these companies here, um, like Best Roofing, Belden, you know, a lot of these guys are making 20, 30% plus on their service and their construction jobs and coatings. So the fourth reason why it's important to manage your leads your bids, your clients, is that you need visibility into what's going on out there. A lot of you might feel like you're uh, flying in the clouds. You have no visibility. Um, you got to know what your sales and estimators are doing because you're paying them, right? You want to know what activities, you want to know how many meetings they're having, how many proposals they have sent out, um, because then when you can do that, number five, you can keep them accountable to goals and to your objectives. And number six, I, I kind of hit on that. Uh, we don't want to, you know, ride the peaks and valleys of the bid and bag type of mentality. So that's the reason why you want to manage your sales, estimating your leads, your clients, because when you do that, I've seen it at all these companies, you produce a revenue engine. And once you have, you know, I heard the saying that, you know, sales covers a multitude of sins. And it's true, because if you have money, then you can spend that money on operations, on people, and things like that to improve the business. So what the goal is, is a professional sales organization. This is, um, it, you might recognize this. This is the, the cover of uh, Roofing Contractor Magazine. This is Best Roofing in Fort Lauderdale. We work very closely with this company. They're our first beta partners for any kind of software uh, releases on new features that we do. Greg Wallach, good friend, and uh, we've seen their company, and I'm going to show you these statistics, um, grow from a $6 million commercial roofing company that was bleeding money in 2009 to a $55 million commercial roofing company that's dominating the market. Um, right here on the left-hand side near the whiteboard uh, is his son, uh, Zach Wallach, and Ian Wallach is running operations, and, and that's, you know, their senior leader management team. Um, so what we want to build at our companies is a professional sales organization, and that all starts with having the right processes in place. Now, we're going to talk about primarily two things uh, today the secrets of lead management and the three secrets of pipeline management. And I'll explain 
uh, what I mean by those. The number one thing with lead management is you need to have a process. And most of the companies that I work with and that I talk to, that I see out there, their lead management process looks like this. Somebody calls in, they write down the name and phone number on a sticky note and they put it on their desk and they'll get to it later because some other fire they have to put out. What happens to that sticky after that? Who knows, right? When you are managing your leads, your leads are your money, your, they're, they're gold. So you have to be fanatical about how you're managing your leads because your leads turn into opportunities, your opportunities turn into bids, and then your bids turn into your clients. And I know for a lot of commercial roofer, roofers out there, their new business comes from their current clients. So one lead turning into one client actually turns into, you know, 10, 15 service jobs or, you know, a re-roof. So your leads are gold. So what you have to do is create a process of how you're going to manage those. Some of the best companies that I work with, they have this mapped out step-by-step, point-by-point on what they're doing with their leads. When somebody calls in, maybe the front desk receptionist takes, out, uh, takes down their information, then they pass it off to a sales manager. The sales manager then assigns a sales or an estimator person to manage the lead. Uh, make sure it's being followed up on, making sure they're meeting with the clients. And you want to do that as fast as possible. So that process is crucial. Secondly, you want to track, track, track. You want to track all of these leads. What do you want to track? You want to track where the lead came from. Maybe the lead came from um, somebody seeing your truck on the side of the road or at a stoplight. Maybe the lead came from a current client referral. Maybe the lead was generated through a relationship, through uh, an insurance agent. You know, there's tons of different avenues for you to receive your leads. You want to see what is your top producing lead generator, whether it's your website, you know, online marketing, whatever it is. You want to track these because then you're able to pour more marketing dollars into your lead gen activities. And that's how you get the cycle started. And then number three, you wanna qualify. And what I mean by qualify, every lead is not a good lead for you. This is a hard pill to swallow because everybody wants to make a sale, everyone wants to close a deal, but when you qualify a lead, I call it going for the no. You want to almost convince these people why you are not good for them. It's a hard pill to swallow. I, I know that. But you want to find out all the problems that this potential client can come across with you so that you can overcome them. Then after you have those uh, hard conversations on the front end, Everything else in the process is so much easier. And so I have a story about a roofer in, uh, in uh, West Palm Beach, and they had so many leads coming in through their online you know, advertising and all these different areas that they didn't know what to do with. So what they would do was this. They would, call, they would uh, go and set up a, an appointment after they received the lead, and when they would um, show up to these locations, what would happen is, that they would find out that they could not fulfill what this building required. So they wasted two hours driving across town to meet with this person, um, and they find out they don't even do that scope of work. And that's what I mean about going for the no, understanding the client's requirement ahead of time. So now when these, this client gets their leads, they always ask these questions on the front end so that when they show up to a meeting, they already know that they can meet this client's need. So from this client, uh, I think uh, if I remember correctly, they got 100 leads in a month. From there, they were able to qualify those down to 20 
qualified leads and they were able to close 17 of those. So it made them so much more productive. They closed more business because before they had that process of qualifying on the front end, what they would do is they would set up five meetings a day for all of those leads, trying to get to them all and searching for the needle in the haystack. When in reality, they just had to have a couple of qualifying questions up front to understand what the client required. So again, lead management is a crucial, crucial thing that you got to do to make sure. Uh, once you get this down, you know, things t start to take care of themselves. Next. Let's see here. Next thing I want to show you here is Pipeline management, I think, let me go here. So pipeline management, what is pipeline management? So once you have qualified your leads and you have a, delivered a proposal to your client, that that is what it means for an opportunity to be in the pipeline quote unquote now some of these opportunities it might be a service job it might be a re-roof it might be a coding you know for some of these re-roof jobs they could take 18 months plus to close it, it could take a long time right or some of these service jobs might take 10 days right you're going to follow up with these differently according to when the customer is going to make a decision, which is number one, the timeline. It's really important. So once you understand the timeline of when the customer is going to make a decision, that's when you know how you're going to follow up with them. And which leads us to number two, the consistency of that follow-up. I heard a story, Greg Wallach told me this story not too long ago, that he won the Trump Doral in Miami, Florida, it was a $3 million re-roof. And after, it took him three years to close this opportunity. After the third year and he won the job, he asked the property manager, hey, why did you give me the job? And he said, you know what, Greg? After the first year, nobody else followed up with me. Nobody else. So the only reason why he won that huge job was because he was consistent in his follow-up. And finally, when you have consistency, when you have a timeline, you're able to forecast the future. All of our clients are able to forecast up between five and 10% of what their revenue is gonna look like in the coming uh, 30, 60, 90 days. And the reason why that's impactful is because you have the whole production side of the business, doing the work side of the business that you have to get ready. You have to hire crews, you have to manage all your jobs. There's a lot of moving pieces. So knowing how much business is coming down the pipeline is crucial for you to actually fulfill the work. So if you have successful lead management, if you have successful pipeline management, you have a revenue engine that's going to guide the growth of your company. I want to show you this sales statistics. This, these statistics were taken from uh, Sandler sales training. And this, this is a game changer when you understand this. 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect. This is the whole sticky note uh, situation. When you get a lead, you write it down and it disappears. Now you can see here, 25% of salespeople make a second contact and stop. These are the people that pick up the phone, call the sticky note, hang up, call it again in the afternoon, and then never touch it again. 12% only make three contacts and stop. That's pretty good. You know, three contacts, that's more than your average, but only 12%. And look at that right in the middle. Only 10% of salespeople more, make more than three contacts. It's amazing. And then on the other on the other side, two percent of sales are made on the first contact. So if you're if you're making one call, if you're having one meeting, two, you're missing out on ninety eight percent of sales. Three percent of all sales are made on the 
third, but on the second contact, 5% on the third, 10% on the fourth, 80% of all sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. So the secret sauce here, and this is why we're called follow-up, follow-up CRM. If you're making follow-up phone calls, emails, and meetings, you're going to grow. If you just put in that fundamental of following up, there's, not, there's nothing else that is going to change your business more than following up with people. So if you want to grow, then you need a system to manage your leads, manage your pipeline. And if you just do that, I promise you, it'll be, it'll be magic. Here's a case study of best roofing. Um, you know, I, I've mentioned them a few times. Here on this, on the top left hand side, on the bottom left hand side, you can see 2009. There were just under 10, uh, 10 million dollars in revenue, and this is really small for the South, South Florida market. The South Florida market is one of the biggest in the country, especially with the hurricanes and rain. Um, like I said, there were about six million dollars and bleeding money. And then once they implemented follow up, you can see the the green is their captured contracts. Year over year, 2016, they are just over 40 million, and uh, 2017 and 2018, they're at 55 million. You can see right here the orange line is their closing ratio. Their closing ratio, you know, everybody wants to think they have a great closing ratio, but you really don't know unless you're managing your pipeline and your deals in a system in a CRM. Um, and the reason why the closing ratio is important is because this is how you scale your team without adding overhead. Imagine you have two people, and here on the right-hand side of the screen, you see the importance. If your target is 100 jobs and your closing ratio is 10%, you need 1,000 leads or opportunities to do that. And let's say you jump down to 30% closing ratio with the same number of sales and estimators, look at the number of jobs you need to hit your objective. You need 333 leads. So your investment is a lot cheaper to hit your objectives. So you can see by implementing a system like this, it is crucial to growing your business. So that's, that's what I have here for you guys today. Um, there's tons more that I could talk about from our experiences with all these you know, top 100 roofers. But that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, if you have any questions, love to open it up or hand it back to, to Jonathan to see uh, what we'd like to do next. Well, thank you so much for that overview. I think after just being reminded again, um, it would be impossible not to want to do more follow-up. And, and I think we can all do better even those that are even using CRM right now and, and managing their leads and, and keeping track of things more than, more than sticky notes. Um, I, I really like that one slide and, and maybe it would be good to bring that up on the screen even as we you know, continue to talk. But the one where we had the statistics, you know, the majority or almost the majority, I think it was 48%. Um, yeah, that one right there. They don't even follow up and yet 80% of the sales happens on the fifth. So if you... If you think about how easy it is just to go from, um, you know, following up once to following up, say, six times, I mean, even if you just called once a week and it took you five minutes a call, because I'm, I'm sure they're not going to tell you their whole life story, you know, that's going to take half an hour to take your, your sales from hardly anything to 80% closing ratio. Um, but anyway, does anybody have any any questions or uh, anything that you'd like Eric to comment on? Maybe, uh, I, I know everybody on the call is at least interested in increasing their sales. Um, I, you know, when we do these group calls, I, I really like them to be a, a group call whenever possible. I mean, are there any uh, tips that anybody on the call would like to share or maybe encouragement from others that aren't doing any type of lead management right now? Maybe your personal story of, um, maybe you couldn't really go out on your own until you, uh, figured out how to, how to increase your closing rate through better follow-up and, and remembering the story of the people you're working with.
Well, Eric, I, I guess we have a pretty silent crowd. Um, <laughs> why don't you um, show them just maybe a little demo? Uh, I, I know you just stopped sharing your screen, but uh, for those that have never seen any type of lead management software, obviously there's a lot of choices out there, but one of the things that really stuck out to me when we first talked was a way that it's custom tailored for contractors and you know the customization can even do beyond that but uh, let's not like get into all the advanced stuff I would just you know keep it really surface level how easy would it be to just start um, if you're used to using a, a notepad um, what would it like look like to start using this yeah I'm um, sorry about that um, with my screen my internet just kind of cut off but you oh, can hear me on okay. the phone yes. yeah yeah but uh, it's for our, for our clients, it's super easy to get started. Um, it only takes about, um, you know, even if you're not ready for a CRM, at least put your leads in an Excel sheet to track. At least do that because then it's in one place. Um, if you're ready, maybe you're doing that already and you want a centralized location for your team to manage everything. Um, for us, it takes less than a week to set up train and get everything going every system is tailored to their company with a workflow process analytics process and users we get all that in there and uh, it only takes about three meetings to set up a, a new system like ours awesome well, does anybody have any questions? I, I know I've asked before, but in case there's any new thoughts. I guess one thing you could do, Eric, if you want to provide your contact information, and, and just so everybody knows it's on the call, we are recording this. So if you'd like to go back over, I know that Eric provided a lot of information, and we also have a lot of callers in here, you know, versus um, coming in with your computer and being able to see a screen. So if you'd like to see how this all came to life, you know, during the presentation, um, feel free to reach out to us at choiceroofcontractors.com and just go to the contact field. I'll make sure to get whatever inquiries come in and, and get that recording over to you. Um, but Eric, why don't you give just a little bit of your contact information, um, just the name of your company, maybe the, the website and your phone number. Sure. Uh, yeah, there's several ways to reach out. First, um, I believe we're on the Choice uh, website, so you can find us there on the partners page. Yep. Or you could just do a Google search at followupcrm.com, followupcrm.com, very simple. Um, and on there, you can uh, check out the website, you know, look at some testimonials, or you can just reach out to me directly at e Vargas. E is an Eric, V-A-R-G-A-S, at followupcrm.com. And um, you'll be able to, to talk more if you want my help or you want to hear more stories about how these other top 100 roofers are managing their sales and estimating team. Be happy just to have a conversation with you. Great. Well, I was just talking to one of the roofers uh, here privately on the call. Uh, he's been with us a few years now, uh, one of our best members in Michigan. Um, I believe he'll probably be reaching out to you for a, a private demo because he was really looking forward to seeing your screen uh, and how it all works. Yeah, I'd be happy to share. Um, what I would do is to demo exactly how one of our uh, clients are using the system. And then we can talk about how it would relate to your specific uh, business specifically. Awesome. Well, thanks again so much for coming on board and, and just helping us with this really, really crucial side of sales. Um, I can tell you, you know, even for myself, I, I'm not, I'm not that much of a salesman, but you know, when I started using um, a CRM product about five or six years ago, I know I saw personally, I know it was more than double. I, I can't remember what the number was, but it might even have been triple. Uh, it was really night and day. It just took about three weeks or so, uh, you know, getting those yeah. follows up, you know, in there and spread out properly all of a sudden, you know, it's just incredible. I mean, in the case, I guess what I would just say is uh, until you're on the other side, um, you really just don't know how powerful it is. So I would just, you know, encourage everybody on the call. Like he said, if you can just get an Excel spreadsheet, 
um, try it for just one month and I'm sure you'll get hooked. It's a little bit difficult getting into the habit. Um, I think we all know that already, but if you put that effort in, set a reminder on your phone daily, um, whether you have Siri through Apple or um, the Google Assistant, you know, just say, remind me daily to write in my leads or do my follow-ups or, or just something so, you know, it, one day doesn't turn into two and two days turns into a week and a week turns into a month and then uh, nothing happens. But like I said, feel free to reach out to either ourselves for the recording or to Eric directly to do a, a demonstration of how his software works or if you had any other things that you want to talk about, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So um, thanks again for joining and have a great night. Thank you. Have a good one. Good night. Thank you. Thanks.